Welcome everyone, my name is Michael Strike, aka Strike Attack, and welcome to the official Quantum Resistant Ledger channel, your video portal into post-quantum blockchain digital asset security. So this video is going to be part one of two. In this video I'm going to run you through some of the fundamental differences between a future post-quantum secure QRL wallet compared to that of a standard issue cryptocurrency wallet like Bitcoin or other altcoins. In a follow-up video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step in the website on how to create one so you can get started right away. Okay, so what makes a Quanta wallet different from a traditional crypto wallet? Probably the most fundamental difference is regard in regards to how public-private key pairs are used. In traditional private-public key pairs, a message is signed against the recipient's public key and the private key decrypts it. But this is also the Achilles heel of traditional asymmetric encryption in a post-quantum world. One private key and one public key. This dates all the way back into the 1970s and your QRL wallet is similar but with one big difference. It uses many many keys, so, but let me explain. When you create a new wallet you create what's called an XMSS tree. This tree contains sign many signatures which are referred to as the one-time signature scheme. Here's the important part. Each signature in the OTS can only be used one time because each tree containing key pairs has a limited number of branches. But don't worry, you can create a tree with up to 262,000 public-private key pairs and the web interface will not only start to issue warnings when you reach this limit, but you can also see how many keys you have left based on the web OTS tracker. So this one-time use policy is a fundamental concept behind quantum-resistant asymmetric encryption. Each key pair is presented to the network only one time, and any keys that attempt to be reused will be automatically rejected. So what, is all the, what does all of this mean? It means that every time you submit a transaction, a counter on your wallet decrements by one. You need to generate a new wallet and transfer quanta over to it before it reaches zero. The takeaway here is that you are creating an NIST draft recommended quantum secure wallet. Your funds are current tech, future step tech secure using state of the art encryption. But this, this, this additional complexity is what is keeping your digital assets secure for now and in the future. So let's talk about how to store your private key information. Security professional consensus is that a hardware wallet is the best option here. Um, QRL is compatible with the Ledger hardware line of products. If you buy one, I definitely recommend you buy it from www.ledger.com. There have been a few scams circulating around in which second-hand wallets have been sold as new and the instructions inside them have been replaced by someone with less than pure and honest intentions. Whether or not you use a hardware wallet or not, you'll need to store your private wallet information somewhere. Now this area is a little bit debatable, but here's some reasonable options to consider. You can download your wallet JSON file after you create it on the website and pass for protect it without any third party software. This is pretty easy. You can, whenever you want to open your wallet, you just take your file and you upload it to the website. Make sure you use a strong password and keep it off any network attached device, especially any internet network attached device. For example, two USB, two USB drives in different locations. In other options, you can take information and write it down by hand and keep at least two physical paper copies in separate secure locations. A disadvantage is that you'll need to write down the information from the website manually, and if you do this, that's always prone to error. A third option is to use a program called KeePass and put your private information there. KeePass is, is freeware that's trusted by Fortune 500 companies for years. It's uh, secu for secure password storage. This might be useful if you have multiple keys across multiple currencies, um, but you still have the issue in that you need a complex password to keep somewhere. So if you still have questions, you can join our Discord community. We have an active and vibrant community there that's full of discussion. And you can find our website at www.thecurl.org. And our online documentation is at docs.thecurl.org. Thanks for watching. More videos to come. Thanks.